right. I'm just laughing about something that triggered off a memory right. sure. of back in the day, you know, like some crazy girlfriend or whatever, you know. Sure. I'll be laughing during these eyes <laughs> and being like, these eyes. And right. like, wow. <laughs> well, I told you, you know, as soon as I, as soon as I hear Guess Who, it reminds yeah. me of my college roommate, John. Um, um, he and I specifically got really into the Guess Who together. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I had I had liked the Guess Who songs up until then, mm -hmm. but then we started like specifically listening to the Guess Who and listen to all the songs on LSD. No, he, he, he didn't think. <laughs> no, I, I, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> he he he, uh, he wasn't the he was he was one of my jock. You know, oh, okay, honey, I got so, it. I got it. So yeah. this was this okay. was before. Yeah. This was I before just can think of LSD the Guess Who being jock no. music, you know, oh. with like titles like uh, "Share the Land," right? You know, right. So kumbaya. You know, you know the like, thing about the thing about the a lot of my the people who then I ended up gravitating to uh, within the wrestling yeah. team were had. Art an artistic, you know, like I got they, they were it. in. Yeah. So they were on the <clears throat> in the spectrum of that group. They were, I guess, you know, yeah. to the side of being yeah. more into the arts and, yeah. and film. And yeah. um, I mean, I've always been into film. My dad was a big, you know, I. My dad's such a huge influence on me. Yeah. I mean, the, he he taught me to appreciate film. He taught me to appreciate music. He taught me to appreciate, you know, like the things around me. Um, you know, he, he, we used to go to Ocean City, New Jersey every summer. I played there. Yeah. Uh, you do, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and we would stay at the Jer at the Jersey Shore in in Ocean City. Mm. And at the end of every summer, my dad would take my sister up to this to this thing on the boardwalk called the Rocco Plains, which was kind of like a giant Ferris wheel. And they stop every car. Every car gets like 10, 15 seconds to stop at the top, at the very top. And it looks out over the ocean and everything. And my dad would take us up there and he would do it every year. Eventually it became kind of a joke. We were like, oh, headed to the Rocco yeah. Plains. But, yeah. you know, my dad's like, that's right. Yeah. Because we're going to go sit up there and, we're, and I'm going to say, look around. Look at what, you know, yeah. look at your lives. Pay yeah. attention to what, you know, mm -hmm. you know, not everybody gets to do this. You're lucky. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and I and I've never forgotten that. Like when I moved here to California, and I'm driving by these mountains, and I'm like, man, those mountains. I hope I don't ever lose sight of how, you know, yeah. beautiful the mountains are. Because I'm, you know, cussing at somebody on the 405 because yeah. I can't get yeah. to my crappy job in time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I I don't know if I ever tell you this story, but how I became aware of you as an actor in the show. Warehouse 13. I was on the road at the time in a tour bus that kept breaking down, or, or at least the air conditioning kept breaking down in the middle of the summer. Queen's right. The, yeah, the Queen's right, the Jeff Tate version of the band. And um, I was on the road and it was crowded in there, so I spent a lot of time on my bunk, you know, watching Netflix. And uh, I came across Warehouse 13. And all of a sudden, you know, I spent a lot of time in the bunk <laughs> sure. watching the show. Sure. It was like, wow, this is amazing. Because, you know, uh, joining that band, one of, the, one of the great things about it was that I, uh, I got to play with my brother for the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah, on tour. Right. On the road. I mean, we grew up playing together, but this is on the road, right? So I'm watching the show, and I'm beginning to get a sense of a family. Mm -hmm. There is there was a lot of heart and soul there is to that show because it's still available for people to uh, to tune in on Netflix yeah. and I'm going wow this is really cool and I I wanted to spend more time in my in this in your world the warehouse <laughs> right. in my bunk right. than I did in my reality that is going outside of my bunk <laughs> you're on stage going wonder what's going to happen to Pete next that's right yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get back and you know keep watching the uh, yeah you guys by then had like maybe three seasons available on Netflix so I, I'm, I'm you know I'm beginning to like really connect with the people on the show as right. characters right and I say you know what let me see if there's anything about them in real life mm -hmm. you know who are these guys you yeah, know yeah and you had done a few 
interviews, video interviews on YouTube. And what really made me connect with you was the one you told the story of how you got the audition. Right. You wanna you wanna tell us? Uh, how, how I how I got the yeah uh, that the moment the your process your thought process of feeling that you were being that somebody else got the part oh right 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 well um you know I I had done I had done a lot of um, I had played a lot of you know stupid guys you know like the Joey archetype from Friends right the kind of good looking dumb guy. Mm. And I had told my, I had told my manager. I said, you know, I don't, I don't see a future in that. Like, I think it's limiting. I want to try and do. I think I can do other things. I think I can be more than just, you know, mm. <clears throat> the good-looking dumb guy on a on a sitcom. So, we kind of made a stand, and uh, and it and it. It, it created a, a dry, a real dry period for my career. Mm -hmm. um, then it, it was tough. I, we had we had just had our son Jack, and then 17 months later, our son Max was born, and and, and it was almost uh, almost two years where I was just like you know I do a guest spot here and there, and then I got this audition for Warehouse 13, mm -hmm. and um, my manager. My manager said, uh, you know, this thing, Warehouse 13, go in, check it out. I went in. I thought I did a pretty good job. Um, the uh, exec producer laughed a lot. I remember that. He was laughing a lot. Uh, unfortunately, the script in and of itself, the, 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 the pilot episode was written more like an X-Files episode. Mm -hmm. It was written, it was darker. It was, mm -hmm. and, and so, um, but they called me back anyway. And so I went into the test, and the test is, is it's, oh God, it's, it's so, I can only think that it's like American Idol when you get down the nerves, and that it's because you realize what, how your life could change mm -hmm. if you get this job, and they put you in a room with 20, 30 executives, and they're all sitting there with their arms folded, <laughs> looking at you like, you know, judging you. And um, <clears throat> so when I got to the test, there were six Pete's there and uh, six Micah's. Uh, and usually at a test, they have it whittled down to two, maybe three. And I'm walking in and there's six. And I'm just like, oh, great. They, they have no idea what they want, right? So the day started and they, they started mixing and matching us. Okay, Eddie, you're going to go with this Micah. And then, you know, when you come out, then you'll go with this Micah and da 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 da, da. And um, and as I was sitting there, um, one of the Pete's came out of the audition room and the director poked his head out and he was like, hey, hey, Jimmy, come here for a second. And he, he put his arm around him and he walked him down the hall. And I was like, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And I and I'm standing there in front of all the Pete's and Micah's. And they're kind of looking up at me, and I lose it. I, I was like, you know, I started taking off my tie. I started taking off my jacket. I was like, you know what? Let me tell you a little story. I got, I just had my second son, my second. So I've got two babies, two tiny little babies at home, and they got their necks stretched up into the air, and their mouths are opening and closing, and they're waiting for me to, you know, whoa, whoa, to, to fly in and regurgitate the worm, right? And I got no worm. Do you understand that, you guys? I got no freaking worm. And <laughs> they're all looking up at me like, you know, like I lost my, I mean, you know, I was much more animated than I am here in front of you today. I just, you know, I, I, I'd be, I had gotten to the point of such frustration with the whole business and everything. I just thought, what, what am I doing? And then, like, um, Joanne, who I hadn't gone in with all day, who would eventually become my, my co-star, <clears throat> she called me over, and she had me sit down next to her, and she was like, dude, it's not over. It's, we're still going. And, you know, I'm shaking and, you know, red-faced and pissed off. And then the, the door opened, and the casting director leaned out and said, Joanne, Eddie, you guys are next. And then I, 
And then uh, we kind of looked at each other, and she was like, see, you, you know, I told you. So, so, you know, that in and of itself kind of, had, we had created this thing before we even went in, you know. And then when we were in there, you know, we're in there in front of 20, 30 executives. And um, as an actor, your, your, your biggest fear, at least my biggest fear in the room is to make a mistake. Because you only really get one try. They don't generally go, oh, do it again. They'll be like, no, 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 that's okay. We've seen what we need. So we're going through, and there, it's a scene from the pilot um, where we're supposed to be protecting the president. And um, Micah, Joanne's character, Micah calls Pete a showboat. And Joanne accidentally said showbot instead of showboat. And we both stopped and looked at each other like how are we going to get out of this right and then so then I just started doing the robot you know and and I started going showbot showbot warning warning and then I did this like Michael Jackson kick like at an, it was like just free association yeah. for yeah, me you, you know yeah your mind you probably had nothing to lose you know yeah like, yeah I mean, I, I, I went to my safe place, yeah. which is com- comedy, yeah. you know, and um, the whole place is now laughing, but they're like laughing and going like, what are we witnessing? Exactly. Like, what yeah. are we? And then Joanne, who is very much like Micah, was terrified that I was now blowing it for the both of us. You know, punched me in the shoulder, <laughs> and I, I was, and I was like, ah, and I made like a big deal out of it, like yeah. Pete would, right? And um, we walked out of there, and Mark Stern, who was the head of uh, Sci-Fi West at the time, turned to everybody in the room, and I found this out later, of course, but turned to everybody in the room and said, "That's the show, right there. Those two. What I just saw, whatever that was, that's what I want the show to be." And you know. Um, Ironically, from what from what would be the biggest fear for an actor to make a mistake ended up being kind of what created the show. Yeah, you know? and um, and so uh, I've tried to learn a lesson from that about my you know any tests that I've had since then. Like you know, don't be so afraid. But it's hard. It's yeah. hard. You know, you you. you you sign all your contracts. You you, go, you look at it and you go, I'm going to be making how much a week? Yeah. And then, you know, your brain starts going, don't don't screw this up. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, just watching you right in front of me reenacting that moment, I I, I got the same sense that, and that, and that, and that what, what I got from watching you on video talking about the moment was that I, I you know I, I thought this guy gets it. You get it. You you put your family before you put your own career. You weren't freaking out because my career is not doing this or that. Mm. You were freaking out because you were not providing for your family. That's right. And I, which I think it's that's interesting. I've never yeah I've never that even was my gone angle there. And I that's when I said you know what I got to reach out to this guy. That's what I went on Twitter, as well, it, well, it, and I reach out to you. Well, do you, do you know? I, I told you when I was a when I was in the eighth grade, ninth grade. Uh, you know, I Blizzard of Oz was. I mean that that was the biggest thing to happen mm. to us kids. You know, yeah. like me and my bros. Yeah. You know, um, and as I said, I was in art. So I, when I was in art class, I got an assignment. I had to do a comic book. And uh, I did a comic book about uh, called uh, Ozzy Osbean and the mm. Blizzard of Oz, and yeah. and they were and everybody in the band were jelly beans, but they were jelly bean superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> so there was uh, you know Ozzy Osbean, Candy Rhodes, Fruity Sarzo, Fruity, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> different connotation. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, you know, times have changed. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. but um, but you guys were all 
superheroes, different uh, colored superheroes with capes, and you flew together in the air. And I look it, good in a cape. It, I'm, yes. I'm sure. Yes. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and and so um, and so. Um,